Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us tmasso at the 1916company.com for purchase pricing and availability questions concerning this watch. So today we are discussing something that was launched back in 2014 and represented the first generation of the modern Omega Seamaster 300, a specifically vintage inflected diver. This is the heritage piece to go alongside the mainstream diver 300 meter, the more forward-looking and high-tech Planet Oceans, and the thoroughly quirky Ploprof. So this is the one that looks back to the minimally beveled, no-guard Seamasters of the late 50s and early 1960s. And it's a large watch at 41 millimeters in steel. Definitely has the vintage aesthetic, though not to the exclusion of modern features and wrist presence. 14... 0.8 millimeters thick, 48 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip, and 52.5 from end link to end link across the wrist. It has a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs, and that's one of those more modern features, having a broad spacing between the lugs. Taking a look on the wrist, my wrist is 16 centimeters circumference. It's a big watch. I'm going to say that on the bracelet, you probably want to wear it on a wrist my size or larger. If you were to take it off the bracelet and put it on a strap, you could probably wear it on a 15 centimeters circumference wrist. It's not super thick, but it's also not super thin. It has a little bit of a cantilever to the bezel, so it's not going to fit underneath the tightest dress sleeves, but it will fit underneath a jacket cuff. The bracelet, designed to look like an old flat link, it's a lot more robust than that. You can see it's got a little bit of a, a taper from the integrated end link. There's satin, there's polish and profile. You can see that you've got screw-fixed removable links on both sides, and that on both sides you have an intermediate-sized link in case you find yourself in between sizes when removing the full-size links. A really robust thick-gauge steel, single swing arm clasp. The clasp also thick-gauge steel, twin Twin trigger releases, it cannot pop open accidentally. A push button slider for fine tuning the fit, 9.6 millimeters of incremental adjustability. We have that no guard profile to the case, as well as no liar style lugs. This was before that. We've got a little bit of beveling, but then highly squared off. A narrow mid case, often a design signature of an older generation of watch. Things designed in the middle of the 20th century, they often had a very narrow case band regarding profile design, no matter how thick they were, the case band would always be narrow, and that is the case, pun intended, right here. We do have a break between satin and polish, so there's some contrast there. Screw down crown, 300 meters, water resistant. A nice sharp beveling. You can see that the recesses of the bezel are blasted, and then the outer knurling is polished. Nice little detail. Excellent action could be the best all-around feeling Omega dive bezel, and it is a 120-click action. We have an insert in ceramic, and then we have a little chimney, a feature you tend to see on older watches as well as modern Breitlings, where you have this polished steel buffer between the crystal and the bezel, primarily to prevent an impact to one from being transferred uncushioned to the other. We do have a little luminescent pip, and though we've got Fotina, the Fotina doesn't carry any costs in terms of luminescence. You can see that we've got all three hands loomed, so you know if your dive watch is actually running in the dark and underwater. And then we've got differential loom for the bezel index, as well as the minute hand. So those are green, everything else is blue. You can tell them apart at a glance. It's easy to time your dive with this watch. We do have a zero to 60 minute count up timer, and I've often said a dive bezel is the best chronograph never invented. It's easier to read than a chrono, and you don't have the downstream service costs of a chronograph. We have quarter Arabic numerals here, no date dial, of course, little recesses for the luminescence. Similar to the vintage watches themselves, of course, Fotina is a sort of fake nostalgia. It's what a vintage Seamaster 300 would have looked like if it had aged over the years and made it to the modern day. To that end, we also have a printed dial where there are no applique indices or numerals, a matte finish, a vintage-inspired broad arrow minute hand, and then we do have one modern feature, well, maybe two. One is hacking, so you can stop the second sand, which, by the way, is white varnished for contrast. The other is the ability to move the hour hand independently without actually changing the time or stopping the watch. So screw that crown back down. We do have the master coaxial signature. So the first generation Seamaster 300 
was not a METAS chronometer. It was a mast coaxial, so it has the George Daniels tri-level coaxial system with the drive on the top of the wheel and then the two different planes of escapement. And a twin barrel, 60 hours of power reserve, a nice flat torque curve from max wind to minimum wind. That's one of the real advantages of having twin barrels in this application. And it is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer. It beats way at 25,200 vibrations per hour, which is a swatch group wide rate that they associate with silicon hair springs, which this watch has. By the way, you'll note anti-magnetic to over 15,000 gauss or 1.5 tesla, effectively rendering this watch amagnetic despite not being a master chronometer. It says anti, it's almost immune. Full balance bridge, you can see that it's anchored on both sides and free sprung for both shock resistance and precise adjustment. The coaxial escapement designed by George Daniels in 74, industrialized by Omega in 99. The tri-level coaxial system in caliber 8500 arrived in 2007 on the hour vision, and it really realizes all of the potential of this tangential friction system, which is a indirect and direct impulse, but it's primarily the tangential friction that enables reduced maintenance, improved chronometry, and extended power reserves. There is a lot to love about this watch. So, though nostalgic, it is very much modern timepiece, 38 joule movement with a very modern finish. If you take a quick look, you can see on the reverse side these spiral arabesque Cote de Geneva machined but handsome bevel on the edge of the bridges. Both polished and blackened screws, satinated wheels and engine turning on the base plate. Though this is a machine finished movement, it is attractive and fun to look at. If you love this watch, reach out to Team Also at the1916company.com for purchase and pricing details.